what is good creatives Tunji from caesar graphics welcome to my channel and welcome to my special mentoring class today i'm going to be using one of the design that i received from one of my students to share how to achieve successful design i'm sure you're going to enjoy this tutorial so sit back relax thank you for watching okay so before i get to the um checking of the design i need to quickly let you guys know that um one of the ways to achieve successful design layout is to take your time to understand the contents you are using on the project in fact what shape the look of our layout what uh what we designers use to create good layout is the illustration that we're placing or we're using on the project. Before using any illustration on your project, I'm gonna advise you to first check what you can add to the illustration to help the success of the project or what you can take out from the illustration to help the look of the project. It's not every time you receive illustration from your client or you download uh, any image from a stock website and that you are supposed to use it the way you receive it. There are times that as designers, you need to add to the image to give you the um, solution you're looking for, or you delete from the image so, so as to have a successful project that, that will draw the attention of the right viewers. All right, so I'm gonna stop here on this and let's go straight to the design and I'll share what I think is not working on the project and what is working on the project. And I'm gonna use this to teach you guys how to achieve successful design. What I noticed that is not working here is first the layout. All right, so the goal of this artwork is to draw the attention of uh, people who are looking at learning um, Lego writing, all right? And I like the fact that, um, you know, Toby used this pen here, all right? And um, the problem I have with this is the fact that we have all this, I ha we have this stuff here that is not really adding to the message. You know, I said something in the beginning of this video that, Whenever you are giving any image to use on your design project, try to see what you can take out from the image to help the success of the project or what you can add. We have um, this here, all right? We have this zigzag from the pen here that is not, you know, helping the project at all. So I expect Toby to take this out, all right? So um, I'm going to quickly go to the uh, redesigning of this and I'm going to show you guys how to achieve good um, design project using the illustration on your project. Uh, so I'm going to create a new layer and I'm going to fill this layer with white. So I'm going to use the color of my background here to uh, do that. So I'm going to use the shortcut, which is control backspace to apply the color of my background to uh, the layer. The, the, let's start with the importing of the element. So I'm going to drag the pen and drop here. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to take out what I notice is not necessary on the image so which is this um zigzag that we have here or signature so i'm going to crop this out real fast so i'm going to hit ctrl enter to convert the parts to a marquee all right and i think i need to add the shadow of the pen so i'm, I'm going to hold out shift and I'm just going to quickly draw this here, like there. All right. So I'm going to I'm going to hold on Alt and click on the new on the layer mask icon here to put this in a mask. All right. So what I'm going to do now is to hit Control I to reverse the mask, and then we have this. Um, I'm still seeing part of the ink from the background. <laughs> So I'm going to use um, Alt Backspace because um, black here in Photoshop always hide um, content from um, layers. All right. So I'm going to use Alt Backspace to do to hide that now. All right. Now, please don't forget before applying the Alt Backspace, make sure you're on the layer mask of the layer. All right. It's very compulsory. Then I'm going to um, activate the free transform and rotate it this way like that. All right, and uh, so I'm gonna hold, hold on out and make this smaller. And this should be somewhere here. All right, so yeah, so I'm gonna put that there. 
So then I'll go to where I have the um, content typed here. I'll copy the title, which is Lego Right Thin. And click here and paste. All right. So for those of you wanting to know, for those of you that care to know the font I'm using here, it's called Stylish Classy Regular. Stylish Classy Regular. All right. So I'm going to hit the Enter key. Or you know what? Let's just, you know, split this, all right? Separate layers because I want to be able to move the two words. All right. So I'll paste this with Control V. All right. And this should be somewhere here. Please, when you're doing this, guys, make sure that, uh, in fact, when you're using script type, all right, avoid making the, um, the letters overlap because making them overlap is going to change uh, the look of the letters and it's going to give it another meaning. All right, so I'm going to make this real big by hitting Ctrl T now and make this big like so. All right, so yeah, I'm going to hit the Enter key and I'm going to hit Ctrl G to put this in a group. Right click and say Convert to a Smart Object. Now the reason why I'm making this move now is because I want to change the perspective of the title. So yeah, so what I'm going to do now is, um, so the idea here, all right, is to make it look like um, this pen is writing the title on a flat surface. One of the ways you can draw attention of viewers to your project is to create what they are not used to. All right. And as designers, part of how we create what people are not used to and uh, on our design project is through contrast, through um, making something look extraordinary. All right. So whenever you're working on design project, I would advise you to take your time to see how you can play with your title. But please, before you make the move of play with your title, try to understand the message, try to understand the project. So in this um, uh, case here, I'm going to make this look like the pen is writing this on a flat surface so i'm going to uh, activate the free transform on this now i'll right click and select distort so i'm going to move this down like that and move this down like so and i am going to right click and i select scale i'm going to hold down shift and push this in like that all right and right click again and say scale and make this smaller like so all right so i'll make this a bit bigger let's just make it a bit bigger and this should be somewhere here like that and it should be below this layer and let's just move this like that all right so yeah so i'm going to move this in a bit all right, you know what? Let's just reduce the size of um, the pen because it's looking too big. So I'll make push this here. Oh, you know what? Let's just change, let's change the blend mode to multiply so that when we place the text, the pen on the layer, um, we are not going to have that background from the uh, from the pen layer on the text or covering the text. So I'll go back to the text layer now and hit Ctrl T. And I am going to right click again and select the start. And this should go up a bit. Please, when you are doing this, try not to deface the look of your title. All right, please. Don't change the text to the point where it will now be difficult for people to read it. Then I'll go straight inside the title folder or the group folder and hit edit content here. So Photoshop is going to create a new uh, document for me and I'm going to zoom out. All right. And I'm going to use a crop tool to push this down. Move this down like that and hit the enter key. And then I am going to select the text tool. Let's click here and paste the text here. So I'll hit control A and go straight to my character box here and type hopefully. Now, the reason why. I'm using the who flow text here is because we're talking about writing here. And you know, most time writers, they are the one that do, um, they do books. So in order to create that connection, it's good to use fonts that are similar or closer to uh, what 
the information on the project is saying. Then the other thing, again, I need you guys to know here is this. You know, we decided to use this um, script type or this handwriting type here because of the pen that we have on the project. All right, so I'm going to make this cap right now. All right, and I'm going to break this. All right, break this here. And I'm going to break this here like that. Okay, and I'm going to make this big like so make it touch here this should be here make it a bit smaller like that all right and i'm going to use the crop tool to push this back up and hit the enter key now we need to change the color of this to the green from the um, brand um, logo so i'm going to drag that and drop here all right i'll make that smaller okay so i'm going to go straight here and make sure you are still on the layer of the text and i'm going to pick a color from here like that and hit the ok button then i'm going to hide the logo i'm going to delete the logo not hide all right so then i'm going to hit ctrl s please don't forget to hit the ctrl s so now if we go back to our project we have the text right here on our project looking the way we want it all right, so the other thing I'm going to add again is the logo of um, where the meeting is going to hold. So the meeting is holding on um, Google Meet. So I'm going to drag the Google Meet logo and place it here. And I'm going to make that smaller. And that should be somewhere here. All right, so I'm going to hit Ctrl S again. And I'll go back to the project. And now we see we have the logo right here on the project. I'm sure you're enjoying this tutorial. If you have not subscribed, remember to hit the subscribe button now i'm going to be doing more of um, tutorials like this for you guys in order for you not to miss when i upload the tutorial i would advise you click the post notification bell so you get notified when i post any of my tutorials if you like this video remember to hit the like button and also don't forget to share this video with other creatives so let's continue all right so i'm going to drag the logo of the brand and place it here now i'm not going to change the perspective of the brand's logo why because um it's not always professional doing that all right Ch playing with the uh, um logo of the brand you're working for all right most especially if the brand is not popular so i'm going to move this somewhere here what i'm supposed to do is to continue with this perspective view of um placing the content but i'm going to stop right now on doing that why because um it's not uh if we do this too much all right if we make the, all the information on the project have this uh perspective view it's going to look like we are playful like it's going to look like we're playing too much with the content in order not to make it look too playful because it's a, pro, a corporate project uh we need to find a way to break the changing the perspective of the um information that we're placing on the project so uh, I think my pen here is going outside of the title. So we need to move this back here because you need to connect this to the um, title or to the handwriting title in order to create that unity. All right. So I'm going to move this down a bit like that. Oh, sorry. I'm moving the logo with it. So this should be here. All right. And um, I'll select the uh, brush tool here. All right, and make sure that I'm on the thumbnail of the pen layer because I want to fade the shadow of the pen. So I'm going to make sure that my foreground here is set to black and I'm going to just fade this out a bit like that. Okay, then um, so what I'm going to do is to drag the Google Meet logo that I download um, from the internet. So I'm going to just rotate this this way. So I'll right click and hit 180 degree and hit flip horizontal. And then I'm going to make this real big all right and this should be somewhere here let's make it bigger again <coughs> this should be here like that all right then i am going to um make a copy of this so i'm going to crop this out like that all right and i'll hit ctrl j okay and i'm going to convert this to a smart object the reason why i'm converting this to a smart object is because um just it's possible i may not like the look of um my adjustment 
so not enough for me to lose the the, the layer all right so it's always good to convert it to a spot of just so as to so that you can go back and fix if there's any error that you are not okay with all right so i'm going to move this the out using the move to here so i'll move this out a bit like that and i'm going to hit ctrl t here on my keyboard right click or oh, you know what before we even hit the ctrl t all right i'm going to first rasterize this all right all right <laughs> so i'm going to use my crop tool here to just cut this out like that so i hit the, i'll hit the backspace and right click and convert to a smart object now and I, i'm going to um activate the filter so i'm right click and choose the skew option here and move this up but now when you're doing this please pay attention to the way you have the um perspective of your title all right because um one of the things that make good design successful is when we make the element on the project work together as um family like we make them work together like they are one all right so uh, the reason why i'm making this move here is because i want this to look like i want this information here to look like they are uh, on a flat surface and our camera is somewhere around here and uh, we have this as the let's say the border all right okay let's just say we have this like a book all right we have this in form of a book and then the book is um facing this angle and then there's a camera on this side taking what we are doing on the book cover or on the book all right and that's why i decided to make this move here so i'm going to hit the uh, enter key on this and i think i like it this way so what i'm going to do now is to add curve all right so i'm going to click on the clip icon because i only want this to affect this layer here i'm going to make this a bit darker like that all right then um i'm going to put this in a group so i'm going to hit ctrl g all right to put this in a group and i'll call this let's just call this um border all right so i'll open this and i'm going to select the magic one too click on the blue color and hold on shift and click on this blue color here and i'm going to select the hue saturation to check this option here that say colorize so what we're doing is to change the color of the blue to the gold color on the tie on the logo of the brand so i'm going to move this to where i have gold like that and i'm going to increase the saturation like that now you see we're beginning to have the same look color from the brand logo all right this is good all right so it's time for us to start adding the other information that we want to place on the project so i'm going to start with a picture of the speaker all right or the host um we don't need this so i'm going to delete this like that and i'm going to draw a shape here so i'm going to hold on shift and just draw a shape somewhere here like that and i'm going to fill this shape with um let's just shape, fill it with black for now take out the outline and i'm going to add the name of the host so i'll copy from here and i'm going to paste here all right now um i want the name of the host or the speaker to be visible so the font I'm going to use here should be something narrow because this space here is um, small. And that's another thing you need to check out. Whenever you are uh, uh, placing the content on your design, see how you can manage space. All right. So right now I'm going to change this to Bebas because Bebas is one of the fonts that I use when I'm looking for narrow type here. All right. So I'm going to change the color of this to white. And this should be somewhere here. All right, and then I'm gonna activate the free transform and make this smaller. Okay. All right, then uh, for the profile, I'm gonna copy that. And then I'm gonna paste it. Still on the same front, but this time I'm gonna use regular. All right, and I'm going to close the space between this and activate the free transform and make this all right and this should come down um you know what i'm gonna add the time to this so the time the meeting time is 4 30. all right make sure your contents are well aligned that's another good thing that helps successful design all right so i am going to copy 
the other information now and and hit Control T to activate pre transform. And now there's one thing I want you guys to notice with on my layout here. Um, notice the way I allow space between the content on my project. Space is very important where you know helping your viewers to access the information on your project easily when you don't allow room for white space trust me guys the design is not going to look successful then the other thing i want you guys to know again here is because i know some of you may be wondering oh caesar we have this huge space here why why is it like that you see most time when I, when you play with type the way i play with type here all right it's always good to have enough space so people can see the information you placed on your project when there's too many information around this trust me it may is possible it will affect the visibility of the title so because i know i play with the title and this is a uh, handwriting um, font or character i decided not to place anything close to you so that my viewers can easily see the information that i put on this side of my project the picture of the speaker so i'm going to drag that and drop here and i'll make sure this is a, above the um frame that i drew so i'm going to hold on alt and place my mouse in between the picture of the host and also the box or the picture frame so i'm going to click as soon as i see the black arrow facing down with the white box to put the picture in the shape so I'm going to activate the free transform now and I'm going to make this smaller and this should be here like that. And then the other thing I'm going to do is to add black and white adjustment and select the clip icon because I only want this to affect the picture of the subject. So the picture of the subject is looking too dark. So we need to boost that with red here to make the picture, um, you know, brighter like that. All right, so we're almost at the end of this. So um, this side of my project, I, I feel like adding something to it so as to make it pop. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a copy of the name of the speaker and um, let's just type any letter here, right? There are times you do this to just make the project look, um, you know, just to spice it, all right? Uh, there's the spicing part of um, design, all right? So I'm going to position this somewhere here and um for those of you wondering what did you type is letter b all right so this should be here all right um yeah and i'm going to reduce the opacity of this like that all right now the reason why i'm making the opacity this low is because um it's not really it's not really necessary on the project it's just to spice the project and you can even make a copy of this and place it somewhere around here like that all right yeah okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to put this in a group so she select all the layers and hit ctrl g and let's see the before and after so this is the after all right and um this is the before and this is the after all right uh before i sign out i need you guys to know that there's no one right way to achieve good design projects there are a million ways to come up with design projects what i'm just teaching you guys here is i'm using this to teach you how to make your design simple so you can draw the attention of the right viewers and also i'm teaching you how to entertain your audience with good design layout all right so take everything i explain in this tutorial and start applying it to your design project okay if you have not subscribed remember to hit the subscribe button and also remember to click the post notification bell so you get notified when i post my tutorials share like and comment on this video and don't forget to share this with other creatives i'll see you again in the next one peace